Hello, hello, this is Umberto and this is the HVAC is in my channel. Today we're going to be talking about internal loads and AED, adequate exposure diversity. All right, so let's get into it. So to begin with, we're going to put the internal loads to our system or to our room layout that we have been doing. OK, on the left side, I have a table, but that also depends on the client. OK, let's go over to the table. For example, we're going to put a load of 900 BTUs per hour and no occupants for the following room types. Family room, great room, finished basement and unfinished basement. OK, but that depends on the client. Another client would like 1000, another one 800, depends. If you don't have anything, so this would be a very good resource. Also, uh, this is based on manual J from ACA standards. OK, so now the other one is going to be for the living room, library, flex room and study. We're going to put a load of 540 and also but depends again on the client some clients would wouldn't like a load on the flex room for example they would tell you i want in the flex room i want zero or in the living room let's put zero something like that okay and also uh, let's gonna put let's put on for the kitchen for the kitchen 2000 BTUs per hour and in manual j they also tell you another scenario they tell you 1200 BTUs per hour but to be conservative we're gonna put uh 2000 BTUs per hour and no occupants. Media room, which is in the basement, uh, if you want to watch movies for a, you know, for a big house, so that's going to be 740, no occupants. For a laundry room, 500 BTUs per hour, no occupants. Owner's bedroom, 683 and two occupants. Of course, husband and wife and then some TV there. Also for the bedroom, bonus room loft, we're going to have only one occupant and no load. It's only the load of an occupant. And then for the bathroom, closet, hallway, dining and foyer we're just gonna put zero and zero no BTUs per hour and no occupants okay so let's start with it so let's uh, so in order to put the internal loads in our room layout we're gonna put in the owner's bedroom right click and then property sheet in the property sheet you're gonna see this part that says internal loads in the internal loads what we're gonna do is actually this should be zero right now because that's how it was but I put it already so this is gonna be the following uh, in here number of occupants is going to be two and then where it says order you're going to put in here eight eight six eighty three there you go okay and then in here you're going to see the occupants load is 460 but that's because of the default when you put two occupants it's going to be actually be uh 230 times two okay but we're going to see that later see appliances 683 okay so now we're going to go to the next one. So the next one is the great room. So right click property sheet in the property sheet. You have internal loads. So you go to the table in the table. It says for a great room it's suggested to have a 900 BTUs per hour. OK, so internal loads in the property sheet. You click in that column and you have only two options in the property sheet where you can put your internal loads are number of occupants in that place the number of occupants is zero and then you can go to order in order you put your internal load which in this case is for the great room 900 there you go and you hit ok so now you x out from there you go to the dining and kitchen you go there right click property sheet in the property sheet you have internal loads internal loads you go here number of occupants zero and then you have in here order so in order you can always put in here uh you know how much it is in the kitchen we're gonna have 2000 so you put in here 2000 however you have also another way to put the load but i don't want to confuse you anytime you put you want to put an internal load taking this into account number of occupants and order see those two number of occupants and order okay but however just to give you more knowledge we're gonna go here to these dots the three dots gives you also an idea in here oh let's put zero for example in here okay so in the three dots it tells you room type kitchen living room laundry block order okay so it's not a complete table but this gives you an idea see the kitchen it has a, uh, three options 1200 1000 and 2000 so we're taking into account the worst case scenario and as I mentioned, say that you live in Miami and then it's very hot and then you don't want to put so much load and then you can put 1200 maybe, but depends in the, on the client. So in a scenario number two, it's 2000, you hit OK and then see automatically it fills this up. 
but don't do this when you do this see if you have 2000 in here you're not gonna put another 2000 then you are oversizing it see your overall appliance load is 4000 that's not good so either you do this kitchen scenario see in this case you're gonna put order and then zero right now i'm making it zero and then that's why so you so that way you don't get confused just touch this number of occupants zero and order 2000 there you go you're all good okay so let's continue with the next one for the bedroom you're gonna have one occupant only see bedroom occupants one occupant and as i was saying in the other video see no in the other video before one occupant is actually 230 see 230 230 is by default it gives you 230 and then latent load to 200 that's from the manual j and it automatically populates so when you put one occupant you don't put any other appliance load zero there you go you have one occupant and then for the other bedroom number three you also you're also going to have one occupant right here you just put one enter let's see one occupant and then for the laundry you're going to have in here occupants in you zero see laundry room is 500 occupants zero so laundry you put in here 500 there you go and then okay so you have pretty much the internal load for every room see owner's bathroom closet foyer we don't have any loads okay unless they say okay we we have been having issues in the past let's put for the foyer say 200 something like that but overall if you don't have any other data this table helps you a lot as a reference all right so that's pretty much the internal loads now what we're gonna do is the next step we're gonna go to the adequate exposure diversity and that's a very much interesting topic okay so where where are you gonna see that so adequate exposure diversity is based on the load meter where is the load meter is going to be this pie right here see load meter so in the load meter you're going to be able to see this you have four tabs the loads see the loads the breakdown the breakdown is a very interesting uh, feature because in here you're going to see what percentage is giving you more load see for example for heating i have 21 percent from the walls and then for cooling actually is i have 25 percent for internal and 23 percent from ducts of course because the ducts are where in the attic and the attic is very hot it's 130 degrees it's very 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 hot okay so that's the breakdown and this is the part that we're going to be talking about now is the adequate exposure diversity see aed is adequate exposure diversity so what do we have in here and what is this okay whenever you are considering zoning your home this tells you if it's recommended to zone it or not. In this case, it's telling you, you have adequate exposure diversity. Yes. So that way, when you have yes, it means that you don't need any zoning. When I'm talking about the zoning, it's mostly considered for basement first floor and second floor houses usually you put a zone on the basement and the first floor and you put zone number two on the second floor alone why because some usually you're gonna have in this heat load calculation you're not gonna have an adequate exposure diversity in here it's gonna say no when it says no it's uh, zoning is recommended okay so what is this let's go again in here what what everything means and what is this graph this graph it means the following on the y-axis we have the glazing load in the x-axis we have the hours of the day okay in the hours of the day you have for example 8 a.m 9 10 a.m 12 14 which is 2 p.m 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 p.m. Okay? So that is how you what is your glazing load. For example, let's check on this. At 8 a.m., your glazing load is about 1200, 1200 BTUs per hour. What is your peak? Your peak is this right here at 13 at, at, at uh, 15 hours, which is 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. you have your highest load. What is that highest load? It might be a, a, around 3,000 BTUs per hour, a little bit less than 3,000 BTUs per hour. 
Okay, so that's your peak. So that peak is very important. What Manuel J calls that peak is PFG. What is PFG? PFG is peak fenestration glazing. So the peak fenestration glazing is actually what is your maximum amount of heat load based on the glazing part, okay? That's the peak. The, the peak is very important because that's going to determine if you have uh, adequate exposure to adversity or not. Okay, so le le let's continue with this. What is the AFG is this line. So this line is the average. The, the green light means average fenestration glazing F F F AFG, okay? So what, okay, so what is the, what is the definition of AAD? So why is this used a lot? The AAD means if the maximum hourly glazing load, okay, if the maximum, which is this red line, does not exceed the hourly average glazing load by more than 30%, you have adequate exposure diversity. Now, in order to make it more simplistic, because this is the HVAC is in my channel, everything has to be easy. I'm going to explain this a little bit better. Okay. The only parts that you have to care that, that you have to consider is this part, these two red lines, two, two lines. The first line, see, the first line, which is red color, is called the AED limit. So what is the AED limit? Is 30% of the average. This is the average, what? Average fenestration glazing. The average hourly glazing load. So in other words, they are say brothers. This is the average glazing load, the green one, and the brother actually is taller by 30%. Taller than 30%. Why? Because that's the limit. The limit says that you cannot have more than 30% of this average glazing load. Because if you do, if you have, if this blue line actually is more than 30%, zoning is recommended. Why? Because the average adequate exposure diversity. It's, it's none, it says no in here. Okay, so let's, in this case, you don't need, it's, zoning is not recommended. And why? Because the peak of this blue line, the peak, which is which means the PFG, which means the peak fenestration glazing, is below the big brother. The big brother that is 30% of the little brother, is is, is 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 below so the peak is below right so that's why you have excursion zero what, what I, i'm gonna talk about excursion in a few in a few more minutes but what is this actually this load it says 29.6 percent it's not more than 30 all right okay so let's continue uh, no uh, let, let's do another uh, another thing so uh, I'm going to explain about this too. See, the blue line, the legend, the blue line says hourly. So the blue line is the, your hourly glazing load. Depends on the orientation of the house too. What is the what is the green? Is the average. There you go. You have the average, AFG, little brother. And then you have the red line, which is big brother. Big brother by how tall? 30%, which is the AED limit. You cannot surpass the 30%, okay? What happens if it surpasses? That depends on the orientation. Let's play around with the orientation. Okay, let's go here. In your house right now, it's facing south. Let's go here. What if we, I do this? Oh, it's different. See, it still doesn't pass the 30%. It says 26.7%. We're all good. And then what about here? We're even better. 22.9%. We're all good. What about here? We're still good. We're at the limit. See? It says 30%. That's the limit. And AED, it says yes. You are still good. You are not passing the big brother. You are not passing the 30% of the average glazing load. Let's go here. You're all good. 
Oh, now you are not good. Actually, in this case, you don't have adequate exposure diversity because what? Your peak load, your PFG right here, your peak load, the, the peak of the mountain, see, is passing the big brother 30% of the average. Okay, the AED limit. It's passing by, by how much? That by how much is called escortion. It's passing by 87 BTUs per hour. How do you know that? How do you know that? Because of the formula. See, PFG means peak fenestration glazing minus 1.3 times AFG. What is AFG? AFG is the little brother. Average fenestration glazing. Okay? So in that case, what is your uh <clears throat> what how much percentage is based on the on the average? 33%. So it's more than 30%. So it's passing 3% more than the big brother, which is uh, the PFG. Okay, so adequate exposure diversity? No, you don't have adequate exposure diversity. In this case, it's recommended zoning. But in the, for this single house, you're not going to do zoning. If you want, you can do it. But if you want to be a little bit better you can just increase the size a little bit of the system maybe half tone possibly something like that okay so let's keep on playing with this what is a oh this is even worse see and what about this this is 41.2 percent that's more what about the other one? Oh, this is the worst this might be the worst case scenario the the, the biggest load okay so if my orientation is like this then you are passing the big brother, the 30% average. You are passing this big brother red line. You are passing it by 48.6%. So from the uh, green light, little brother, until the peak of the uh, glazing load, see, until the peak, you have 48.6%. It's more than 30. It's way more. And your excursion is 622. The excursion again is this line right here. The excursion is from the big brother, from the P, from the AED limit until the peak. See? Until the peak. So technically, this formula makes sense. This formula means you are subtracting from the peak, from here to here, you are subtracting these two guys. AFG minus the 30%. So you are subtracting this whole AFG minus 30%. So you are talking about the big minus this minus this 30%. That's, this is this formula. Do you have adequate exposure diversity? You don't. Uh, that's why it's telling you. But we're going to go back to normal. So we're going to do this. We're going to do this. This is uh, this was our normal. So you don't have any zoning. In this case, you might consider zoning or increasing the size of the system. If it was a basement and then first floor and second floor, zoning is encouraged, right? All right. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also, it's very interesting if you put a comment too. No problem. I all, I'm always available. And then in the next video, we're going to be doing more system selection. And then later in more videos, we're going to be putting our ducts, which is very important. Manual D. All right. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.